Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like at o'clock, and uh, we. I'm B. I'm Pow. This is B now. This is the new B. It's the old B needed to go off to finer lands, and I was doing working with a B anyways. The professor Boric is now the new B for B Pow. We are B Pow. Go over to B Pow Picks in the Patreon, We're making lots of money over there. So we're, we got a whole new group of picks there and everything, and we but but we've had something. We had to stop everything today. We just had to stop everything because we have a huge trade that just happened, and uh, we were gonna do. We were working on a Toronto future look ahead type thing after their playoff exit, and then this trade happened. So we're gonna combine them together here. Um, we're gonna look at the trade. What does this mean for the Toronto Maple Leafs? Uh, the trade itself is uh, Kasperi Kapanen, Jesper Lindgren, Pontus Aberg um, going to the Pittsburgh Penguins with the Leafs getting the first overall pick, which is the 15th overall. The Pittsburgh Penguins don't really like their first round picks very much. Uh, Yvonne Rodriguez, Philip Hollander. And David Warsawski, who if there's a throw-in of any throw-ins, <laughs> that has got to be it right there. So, Joe, what are we looking at? Where do you think where do you think Toronto might be going with this trade? What do you think of the trade? Uh, how do you uh, who do you think might at the early set onset win the trade? Uh, all of those sort of questions, there, buddy. Well, when you look at it from the early onset, I would say from the naked eye test, it would be Toronto because you just got a first round pick from Pittsburgh, which is top 15 in a deep draft, even though it's at exactly 15. It's still a deep draft. And you got rid of um, a guy that it seemed like even though he's a good player in Capitan, he was one of the guys you were going to move on from in order to free up space. So you did find a trade for that. You also got rid of Lindgren when you already have enough just quick defensemen that are smaller and have no physicality. Um, so that, uh, that you don't really need those guys. And then Pontus Aberg hasn't shown anything really. So, that was kind of the other throw in guy for on Toronto's end as a, uh, but Pontus Aberg as a throw in is 26 and maybe for the Penguins could still, like I said, pot like seven to 10, something go. He's not like Wazowski who's just going to not do probably play maybe two games. If there's a bunch of injuries and it's like, ah, oh, crap, we have to put you in. Uh, like that'll be the only case there. Um, a where, depth yeah, player. <laughs> Where Rodriguez is, like you said, he probably won't get tender because then it'll be extra money you shouldn't have to pay him. I, w- I wouldn't say that doesn't mean they're not going to keep him, though. They'll probably not tender him and then try to do a cheaper contract for a year um, and then their move and see how that goes. Hollander's a little ways away. He's great defensively, not the best offensively. But he when I read him um, after looking at the trade before we got on here and also just from all the different scouting crap I watch all the time and read. Uh, he's a guy that they like how he looks in the offensive zone. He just doesn't present a threat yet. If that makes sense, like he's someone that seems like as he ages into his mid twenties, he might show more offense, but he's always going to be amazing on defense. So you're going to at least have a good third liner where I would say his ceiling, there's no chance. I, I don't I don't think there's a chance he's a first liner. I would say his ceiling is a second liner if he puts it all together and he basically becomes Philippe Deneau or because he, in different facets, might be quicker and do some other things Deneau doesn't because of the type of player he is to how Hollander is, their differences. Maybe he could get in a lineup that he would – pair with some guys like you would in Toronto a little bit higher point total but that would also be because of the team he's on compared to the team Deneau's on so yeah a player that comes to mind that maybe be his ceiling and it would be great for Toronto if he turned out to be that way would be uh Phil Pila from you know he's played in Detroit New York Islanders he had a couple you know 30 40 point seasons and something like that plays good defensively that type of player 
is what he could go. And it's just like so Toronto now to have that for him to develop into that type of player. It's really hard to say. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't heard anything much about his physicality, but uh, if he could add a, if he has a physical element, it would certainly be good for the Leafs because they, they certainly need it. Yeah, I completely agree. They need to, they're a team. I think the Leafs, uh, they moved in a direction that I think fans would like because obviously they got rid of their first round pick in a trade that not many fans liked. Uh, so it's good that they got back their first round pick in a trade that a bunch of Toronto fans are commenting. We just fleeced you uh, to Pittsburgh fans. So it seems to be looking good for Dubas right now. So. Yeah, I do. It, it it does it does seem to shine a little light a lighter on uh, Dubis with this trade, getting that uh, first round pick in the fifteenth spot. We'll go into how it affects Pittsburgh when we do Pittsburgh, which may be next. But uh, um, we'll continue here with Toronto. Uh, I think they're gonna they, they they're definitely gonna. You would have to think now that they're looking to add to their defense. Would you not? Toronto, oh, yeah, yeah, I would have to say, I mean, they need somebody else in their defense. You added, obviously, in this trade, um, you added in a random defenseman that you're not going to play. I think you're going to probably draft if you don't draft a forward. I would think, like we were saying, that might be a defenseman there, but he's not going to be ready right away. So you're going to want to pick up someone in the free agency. As you said, if he doesn't stay with the Blues, uh, Petrangelo possibility Tyson Barry uh, is already in Toronto and I don't think they're gonna keep him but the there's just a lot of guys I mean I see veteran guys that could kind of help them it's just like who do they want they could keep Cody CC of course if Tanev leaves they could get someone like him for physicality but like none of these guys are amazing names it's more okay he's physical I, like, I think all Toronto fans just threw up on themselves here when you mentioned that keeping Cody CC. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh that, my gosh, that, that's the desperation you have when you have no physicality. So that's uh, that's why I'm saying you need to bring in that physicality more, and I think that's what we always talk about because the reason he's been around and has played more than Toronto fans have wanted is for that very reason. You have. Right no physicality on your defense. So yeah, well, the question is, are they going to start getting their heads around the fact that they need physicality now? Yeah, yeah. that's why um, I'm trying to look. I mean, if they get obviously over CC, if I, I, I mean, this is anybody. I mean, I think it's a no brainer if you're taking Chris Tanner. I mean, obviously you're taking freaking Chris Tanner uh, over Cody CC. I don't think anyone's going to, debate that it's not like he's the most peachy clean defenseman but he's pretty good and he's much better than Cody CC uh so you could go there um another bigger defenseman uh but he's not showing up as well in the playoffs is Justin Braun but I don't think they'll go there unless if he picks it up and starts showing better uh, Gudis is one that would be mostly physicality and brute and probably give you what, like, much better, like, the physicality with actually not being an idiot, uh, other than maybe getting suspended once in the season, uh, over Cody CC, where Cody CC just seems like he's lost on the ice sometimes. So that's why, uh, Gudis would not be a bad replacement there. And another one is Brandon Dillon as a lefty. Uh, both of them. I know I just gave two guys from Washington, so Washington fans are probably going to hate me. But uh, Brandon Dillon is someone that could possibly be that guy. Another bigger guy at 6'4 can come in and give you some physicality there. Or Edmondson. So they got to wake up and get some of those types of guys. I would think so. But I, I, I'm I, I, knowing them, I think I. this is what I think the, something that they would do. Uh, first of all, it's Justin Schultz screams off the page as a defenseman that they'll make the mistake of acquiring. Let's hope that doesn't happen, Leafs fans, because I I don't think that would be a wise move. Um, there was rumors that TJ Brody was going to be coming back to Toronto when they were trading Kadri 
in the Calgary trade before they went and did what they did and got Kerfoot and Barry uh, from Colorado. Um, so there's a really good possibility that they could be looking towards TJ Brody. I believe TJ Brody's from the Toronto area. Um, not a bad guy. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad defenseman to pick up. I don't know how much he's going to cost. Probably almost the same as what he's making now, four and a half to five. I wouldn't want to pay more than that, would you? No. No, I would say so. I wouldn't want to pay him much. He was just under five this year. Um, where TJ Brody, though, since of the similarity with the city, he's been there, that would be a good pick, too. That's a good pool. Yeah, I agree with that. That would make tons of sense. He has similarity with the area. Um, and he's a good leader as a defenseman now entering his uh, 31 season next year. So that would be a pretty good move for maybe a couple year contract. Yeah, a couple of year, depending yeah. on what everybody else is offering and all that. Sammy Votnin and screams is a guy that they might be interested in. And I think that would be a good pick for them. Sammy Votnin isn't the biggest guy in the world, but he's not, ter- he plays a lot bigger than his size and, uh, he's a good puck mover. I like him overall. Uh, that type of uh, uh, competitive nature of Vatman would, I think, would be a good option for them as well. Yeah, I completely agree. I agree. Um, if you want a veteran that's cheap as cheap uh, after this year, just to get to be a leader on your, like I said, because I think they're going to bring in two defensemen. One's probably going to be more the guy we're talking about that's actually going to be more noticeable and play and do stuff. The other probably be a good veteran leader, which if you look at one of them now, if Justin Braun's cheap after this playoff, one of them might be him because of how much his uh, value would go down. But another could be Andy Green, you know, ain't getting much anymore. He's looked very solid in the playoffs. Uh, He's actually played more to show, oh, maybe I actually would still be a good third pair defenseman if I'm not overplayed. And uh, can be a good veteran on a team. That's a guy as a veteran you could look to, or to not move too far away, uh, Derek Forbert. So, well, we we've mentioned Forbert yeah. almost everywhere, and uh, I think he'd be a good pickup for anybody for a cheap veteran. Um, I I get the feeling that Green is like I'm staying around that Islander area. Or I'm going to retire. And I have a feeling that Lamorello is interested in bringing him back after a good solid playoff. So I don't, I doubt very much he's on the table, but I do understand what you're saying. I think of a guy like Trevor Van Riemsdyk, 29 years old, you could probably get him for a decent price. He certainly would be better than Marinchin and Hole and basically most of their defense already. Uh, he would definitely be an upgrade at a, at a cheaper price. Uh, Marinchin, uh, or sorry, uh, Tim and uh, Votnin, if they could pull those two out of uh, that, I think that their defense would certainly be looking a lot better. Yeah, Votnin also is another guy. He really stepped up before they got eliminated um, and looked really good. So he's another guy that could be big, a big addition as well. That's another good uh, possibility. I mean, one that a a lot of um, people uh, bring up, I know, is the fact that, um, according to Sport Track, I don't think he's leaving. But did did Tory get an extension yet? Who's that? Did Boston give Krug an extension yet? Because according to no. Sports Track, oh, his no, no, no. contract no. Uh, falls after this. That, that's an interesting so. possibility if so, they can scoop Krug, but yeah. Uh, I don't I think guess. he's going to leave Boston, but if you can somehow. He's from the Detroit area. There was talk about him going to Detroit. Toronto's not far away. It's a very Toronto thing to do, and I don't think it would be wise for the makeup of their team. But I could see them doing it. Gotcha. No, that's a good point. Yeah, I could definitely see them. Well, that would be a great addition because he's an overall – he's not the biggest defenseman, obviously, but he plays bigger than he is and actually is a a 
pretty good overall defenseman in terms of getting you offense and all that. So that would be a yeah. he's underrated good. defensively. Boston play to Boston fans think he's terrible defensively, and that's not true. He does what he can with this size. I think he's not yeah. too bad. I don't think that's true. I'm sure I'm gonna get no, I don't, in the comments. Section. I don't think so either. And uh we're usually biased the other way. So when we're defending yeah. Buddy on Boston. We're talking about Boston players, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our first instinct is to say they're all trash. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so okay, we got all that so far. So Dubas, we got you have covered, buddy. You're getting Vatnin, and <laughs> you're getting Van Riemsdyk, and uh, then you might have a little left room left for some additional uh, grit on your forward lines. But you also got a first-round pick. So let's take a look at who they may have taken in that 15th spot. Uh, maybe if, if you might think that they may trade it. I, I don't think so. But if you want to mention something about that, great. Uh, go ahead. But uh, who are we looking at in that 15th spot? I'm sure a lot of Toronto fans are, are already looking at that already. Yeah, I don't think they're going to move it again. I think they're going to – I know a guy when – um, one person that writes for Flyers and Idiot and also does stuff for Dover Prospects, Claire put out Jarvis Schneider, um, Gunner, and uh, Dawson Mercer. That was the fourth person. As uh, who she would debate, or I don't know if that's who she would debate from, but she just wanted to get the poll to see what people would say um, and all that good stuff to see. So I'm going to pull that up and see where it's at now because that will be a fun thing to follow uh what people think because she has there's probably a couple toronto fans of but so right now it's still seth jarvis at 51 percent and Braden schneider at 30 so they think those are the top two right now i would probably agree with that because i guess toronto would be a team i would expect to probably pick the safe guy if he's there um so that makes sense to me um, but Jarvis is also going to be a good player. It just depends. Is he going to be a ceiling, like a top ceiling player? Or is he just going to be that guy that looks nice in the NHL and is always a nice NHL player, which in this draft, you might, as you said before the podcast, want to get a better than that player at 15 because of how deep this draft is. Cause you're probably going to find a better than that player when it's all said and done after 15, if he only becomes a third-line forward. Seth Jarvis, yeah, he's a small guy. He put yeah. up over two points a game, though. Um, That's it's, why it's, it is. It's really hard to to great, to – he's got a wicked shot, fast. It's hard to put a, pl- uh, a player on what he's going to be. Um, there's I heard comparisons to Forsberg in uh, Nashville, and I think that's pretty fair. Um, so, but the question again is, and, and you were talking about making a team here. They have enough players like that, honestly, really, That's they just why. have enough players like that. However, it's a weird spot because I think as a position and player, Seth Jarvis is probably the best player available. I don't think Schneider who they need defensemen has the upside that's going to make him be uh, like he, he might be a top four defenseman. Maybe he might not. He might be a five, six. He's almost assuredly going to be a five, six though. He's a good, safe pick, right? If I'm going to go with a defenseman, I'm probably going to go with the guy with the highest upside, but has uh, a, a lower percentage to reach that upside, but has a higher upside. And I like Goulet. I like Goulet in that spot. I, I, I think I'm I'm pretty high on him. I've mentioned him a lot in my uh, uh, videos I've done about uh, this draft. Uh, he has been creeping up a lot in many people's. I've seen him as high as I've seen him as high as twelve on on many very well respected scouts drafts. So, Caden Goulet, six foot three, 187 pounds, put up 42 40 points in 64 games. He he's he's kind of like your Tanov, I guess, you know that type of defenseman that is going to give you everything, some grit, 
Um, as far as value for what is going to add, the thing about Caden Goulet, and the thing that may be difficult here, is I don't think I think Toronto is looking not three four years down the road, and Caden Goulet is probably three four years down the road. So it's Which Snyder um, might be a tad quicker, but yeah. not as much of a ceiling yet. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That would be the thing there about that. My thing is uh, they've shown a tendency to take the highest, the best player available, and I think they'll just take Seth Jarvis and be done with it. That's my leaning, even though I don't know if it would be best for him them to get a right winger, a small right winger for that lineup, but it might be what they do in the end. Yeah. That would be the safe pick at uh, forward, definitely. I would say if they pick the safe pick defenseman, it would probably be Schneider because – He's another guy that if he hits that top four is going to be like a lot of scouts think Goulet will be a minning, a minutes logger, excuse me, someone that logs a lot of minutes for your defense and consistently looks good. Both of those guys have some skill in the other end, but they're more going to physical you up, play defense, and then that'll lead to some of their offense. They're not going to wow you in the offensive zone. Yeah. But that's – uh why I think the safe pick would probably be Schneider if they're actually going to take a reach and go for Goulet or go for a Holloway, who's obviously plays as a smaller guy, but with a big chippiness in his game. Um, they could also do uh, that as well. So it's going to be interesting because if they go for potential, um, it's going to be fun to uh, watch because that's not going to, like we said, Toronto has been tending to go with the safe stuff recently so if they start to go for potential then that's uh is going to be a lot different uh adjustments for them because i know another guy that's moved all around the sheets that's a very good scorer if they wanted more of that but is not five nine like some of the other scorers uh is forster uh who is like sometimes at 15 on other scouts, he's all the way down in the 20s. Other people, you're re- it depends what you're looking at, but that would be a big potential pick because he has an absolute cannon of a shot. The problem is he went from having a low points total to then just astronomically increasing. So you would want to kind of see more. So that's why it's a big risk. But it could the risk reward would be high if he hits his ceiling. That's why it wouldn't be a Maple Leafs pick at all. It would be changing the tide of how they kind of draft. But if they really want to go for potential and maybe getting a steal, Forster's a guy that has a chance to be a steal in this draft because of what I just said. How many guys go from twenty three points to eighty? So, like, when you do that, that makes everyone go, what the hell just happened here? So now they don't know where to pick you. And if you keep gaining that confidence, well, then the sky can be the limit there. So that's why I figured I would mention him. I just like him as a wild card guy in the draft in general. So, Yeah, we'll make we'll do a couple more here and we'll finish off. Um, I, I, we were talking before the podcast about – or before the video about a guy, uh, William, William Volander – um, I really like that kid, but then there, here's again, it's the kind of player they would draft, but he's not going to be ready for four years, but no. his upside is spectacular, really. Mm-hmm. No, I completely agree with that. Yeah. He's a big, any bigger defenseman that can also move some, uh, you want to obviously have interest in, cause if they're good on their skates and they're a bigger defenseman, that's somebody that should automatically draw interest to your team and especially a team like Toronto. So I completely agree with that. Um, he feels guy, like one of those defensemen that get picks late and everybody goes, what happened? Why? How is that? Yeah, no, that's I'm completely sure true. If he, yeah. Now a guy that I would say, um, I hope they don't pick him, but a guy that I could see them picking cause they're not going to pick him in the first round, but second, Rounds so I'll just throw it in there because I love this guy is Tuck. He's a power forward. Um, Alex Tuck's brother, Luke. Uh, he doesn't play much different than his brother. Uh, so that would fit into Pesky, piss the other team off, could score, plays a good game you need. Uh, that would be someone I could see them looking at in 
the second round because he's on a lot of people's second rounds. The earliest anybody has him is late first. So obviously you're not going to pick him at 15. So. All right. And then I'll throw one more in there and we'll finish off. Thank you, Joe, for joining. I don't even know if I should say that anymore. You're just, we're just part of the furniture here now, both of us. So uh, I would say I think if it happens to slip down and he could possibly do that, I would say – Dawson Mercer would be a great pick for them as if they're, they're going to go with the forward. He's the kind of guy, he's like a wheeler in uh, Winnipeg there. And uh, he's, he's, he's not big, but he plays very big. He's uh he's, he's got a lot of tenacity to him. He can put up points. Um, he's actually got really good possession stats as well. I think he'd be, I, I think if he's there, I think they're going to take him. I think that's a guy they're looking at. If they don't go with a defenseman, if they don't uh, go with what they're much needed, if they're going to go with the defenseman that can play as soon as possible, I think Braden Schneider is the pick. And uh, if they decide they're willing to wait, um, I, I, I would hope for their sake they take Goulet. But uh, you brought up some really good points, my friend. And uh, Toronto, in this, to me, I thought they got, let's looking at the trade itself. I thought they got pretty good value for a guy they were playing lower in their lineups and couldn't make their top six. You get a first and, uh, you know, uh, Hollander, who is a possible third line center for a guy who would have to go on projection. Pittsburgh's going on projection here that that uh, he's going to be able to play in the top six with some centers there. And for Pittsburgh, it could end up turning out very good for them if if their projection is what they, I'm sure they believe uh, Kapanen can be, it could end up being the same kind of Pittsburgh move that always happens. They just grab these guys out of the air, and next thing you know, it all meshes together, and they're in the Stanley Cup Finals the next year. Yeah, no, that's completely true. I completely agree with that. I mean, they have, in this draft, uh, that's why this was a perfect trade for Toronto fans, because in this draft that's so deep, 15th pick in this year's draft might it's be a deep more draft. like a 10th pick in most drafts uh, because you're, of how deep the talent is. Uh, you're getting guys that probably are top 10 talent at 15 if you pick the right guy because of how deep this draft is. Guys that would normally be top 10 talent in other drafts or, or not going to be in this year, yeah, yeah, in this year's draft. So that's why. And then as for defensemen, uh, they want to draft some in this year's draft. But obviously, as my buddy and I talk about next year's draft is the defense gulag uh, draft uh, compared to this one. But that's something we'll get into way down the line, obviously. Yeah. Anyways, Joe, thanks for chiming in. That's our full 42, boys and girls. I'm glad you've stuck around and hit the subscribe and the bell as you've been doing. I'm so thankful for that. Thank you for uh, the hitting the subscribe uh, or going over to our Patreon who now uh, Boric is part of as well and subscribing there. We're getting lots of subscribers over there. Go check it out. I'll put it in the comment section or, and uh, you can just hit the button and slip over there and peruse the environment. Also, you can find all our work at steel flyers, www.steelflyers.com fantastic site where you can find a lot if you're especially if you're a philadelphia fan but not only there is everything you can possibly imagine on that site even if you like racing everything every sport is going to be covered thanks for coming in have a great day lots of love to you